Well, here we go with previously on our second to last episode and I'm done. Like, I'm just done coming up with theories. This was a good episode. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Durbania. I'm Durbin, and this is my spoiler talk review for One Division Episode H, previously on. <sighs> this is a good episode, and I like the reveals that we're getting. This is very cool Marvel stuff, and I'm excited to get into it. So, Agatha Harkness, like I've said, don't know too much about her. Actually, I know nothing about her in the comics, which has proven a positive experience for me watching this show. So what I thought was cool was how they took this episode and they opened it in Salem, Massachusetts in 16, whatever the year was, and here it looked like they were going to burn Agatha at the stake, but it was her own coven of witches for getting all upset of her breaking the rules, which I love her epic line here. I didn't break your rules, your rules to my power. Oh my freaking goodness. But what's great about this opening scene, and I, I'm sure we're going to learn a little bit more about this, I hope so, in the final episode, but just kind of the shallow end of this right here is the fact that you see all these witches shooting their blue power at her, and it hits her, and you can just sort of guess she's supposed to be dying. Like, even her own mother is like the lead witch putting her on trial here, but then all of the blue streams of magic turn purple and spread outwards to those witches and it's like she's taking their power and she destroys them. And then her mother does the same, like that crown of magic forming on her head, the Scarlet Witch thing. And so it's very cool and then she defeats her own mother. What I like about that though, is showing us really, Agatha is quite powerful. So that when we come back to present day, and here we are in Agatha's basement with her runes all over the place. When we see how bewildered and baffled and, and all she is of Wanda's power, we can comprehend it a little bit better by just that quick preview of how powerful Agatha is in the beginning. So seeing how powerful she is, now she's sitting here flabbergasted at all that Wanda could do. I thought it was cool how she took that locust and she turned it into a bird, saying like things like that took her years to do. Then in her anger, she looks at Wanda like, you have magic on autopilot out there on the fringes of the town. And she's talking about the sheer detail of her chaotic, creative magic. How she took everything and turned it into this giant sitcom. And just where did that power come from? Who and what are you really? Which is what I'm asking. And what I thought was interesting about this episode, the previously on, is really going back through Wanda's history. Because I felt like this episode was more of an origin story for Wanda Maximoff than we got in any of the Marvel movies thus far. So it was really cool to spend this time with Wanda to literally get into her head and get to know her character a little bit better. It was cool to go back in time and actually see Wanda as a child with her brother Pietro right there in Sokovia in their apartment right before that stark bomb came right in and blew up the apartment. So right here we get the answers as to why the sitcom and all that stuff because here she is watching the Dick Van Dyke show and just what a wonderful family time it was. What wonderful memories it is for her family. How they would practice English in this time watching this show. So like you, you understand kind of her tie to it. It, it kind of helped her with her sanity watching these shows and remembering this good time with her family. I, I don't know if this says something bad about me, but I'm sitting here watching this scene unfold. I'm like, where's the Stark bomb that's gonna come right here? The shell that doesn't go off and they're hiding under the bed for two days. Where is that? And then boom, as soon as that thing exploded, I jumped. Like I knew it was coming. I was asking for this stupid Stark shell to come in there. And it was pretty devastating when it did. And there they are hiding under the bed. And you know what kind of ticked me off? She was like reaching out her hand to do some magic to the bomb. And then all of a sudden, Agatha pulls her by her feet out from under the bed. And it's like, so what did you do? Cast a probability hex over it or whatever? And I'm sitting there going, well, I don't know. You grabbed her by the ankle and you pulled her out from under the bed. Did she defuse the bomb with magic? You stopped the memory. Come on. But it was interesting because it shows that Wanda already had giftings and powers. I mean, here I am thinking, okay, so we're, we're separating her from X-Men really, cause you know, her dad isn't Magneto. So we're kind of still separating her from that. And I'm thinking, okay, so all of her powers came from the Mind Stone, but it turns out that's not the case. She already had magic, like Doctor Strange. The fact that we have it established in this Marvel Cinematic Universe that magic does exist. 
She was born with the power. As Agatha said, it was dying on the vine, but revived by the Mind Stone. So the Mind Stone helped revive what she already had. It like, uh, she absorbed its power and it made what she had greater and come to life. Which that was an interesting scene. That next memory where we see how she volunteered to be experimented on with Hydra with the Mind Stone. And how when she touched it, it turned all yellow and then she saw the vision of the Scarlet Witch. Like Agatha's mother with the magic and the little magical crown on her head. So it was very cool to see that moment and it's like... Okay, so we're building towards her identity as the Scarlet Witch. This is a fascinating way to build towards that. So I thought that was very cool going through her memories. And again, probably the most touching one is her and Vision. Because watching the MCU, I feel like they first meet Wanda and Vision in Age of Ultron. And of course there shouldn't be love or chemistry there because Vision just came to life. And then all of a sudden in Civil War, you, you kind of feel there's a little chemistry there, but you, you don't really get too deep into it. So actually, I feel like this memory here helped fill in the gaps where she's watching Malcolm in the middle. So here she was, you know, experimenting on with Hydra sitting in her cell, watching another sitcom. Now here she is watching Malcolm in the middle. And then you have Vision coming through the wall. <laughs> Which, you know, she goes, we talked about this, Viz. But this was a moment where she invited him in. But what's cool is this is just this tender moment where Vision's talking about he's never had love in his life to where he would feel that loss and grief. And his line here is so powerful to Wanda where he says, what is grief if it's not love persevering? I thought that was a very interesting and very powerful line. But it was this great tender moment that showed why Wanda's falling in love with Vision and how Vision kind of helped pull her back from the brink. So by doing this little scene that I think takes place in between Age of Ultron and Civil War, it helps fill in those gaps and show us the chemistry that was already started in building between Wanda and Vision before we got into Civil War. So it was very cool going through those memories, building that chemistry and building that up. So I thought that was good to see that and good to see, like we already could figure why it was so hard for her to let go. But it's also nice to be able to see it and feel it as they're portraying these scenes. And then you have Agatha saying, okay, I get it. He pulled you back from the brink. Okay, your parents are dead. Your brother is dead. And now Vision, the one who keeps pulling you back, is dead. And you want him back. And that triggered her memory of going to S.W.O.R.D. Now, this was very cool. Because really, you get to see how crooked and bad Hayward is. But you get to see that Wanda didn't go in there and just steal Vision's body and go against his wishes. Which is the indicator we got earlier. So we got that question answered. She came to mourn. She came to find his body, to bury his body, to kind of, for her own closure, have a funeral for her loved one. And Hayward would not give up the body. But he said, you know, you can say goodbye here. But what's interesting in this scene is how he plants the idea in her head. And it's so sneaky because he pretended that her motives were to come and bring Vision back with her power. Like he's already kind of guessing her power is the energy, the source he hasn't tapped into to bring Vision back from the dead. So it's like he planted the seed of that idea in her because he wanted to see what she would do. So this dude is really quite crooked and he wants Vision alive for his own purposes. So this is kind of fascinating and you could bet maybe there's a good motive there, right? I mean, come on, Thanos came, snapped and half the universe gone. They were at the mercy of the Avengers when Hulk got the uh, glove and snapped and brought half the universe back. And so why be at anybody's mercy again? Let's create Vision and make him solely ours. And so he's like our protection. I'm wondering, if maybe he does have a little bit of that motive in there, but you can definitely tell this is a bad dude and he is trying to manipulate Wanda and plant the seed of that idea in her head. But that was kind of heartbreaking when she went down to where his body was. I can't feel you. And then left. And then she had that note in her car, the address to Westview, signed V, you know, a place to grow old in. And then you just see in her grief she just lets it all out and that magic explodes and it creates the show. It creates everything. And once it creates everything, she creates vision solely out of her mind. 
and the fact that all of her power is red, right? All of her power is red. So her red power goes out, creating the town, creating this illusion, and then yellow power comes out of her, mind stone power. And so from the mind stone power, I'm guessing she absorbed from those experiments is what created vision pretty much out of thin freaking air. So the vision that exists inside the hex is not the vision's body that is out there and dead. And that's why he can't survive outside the hex. I just kind of thought she did steal his body and revived it and was kind of keeping it alive, but had to stay inside the power. That was my theory. And this is why I'm done with theories because they're just so freaking wrong. She created the dude out of her own head. So in a sense, this is the true vision because the vision that came out of her head is the vision she was in love with. It was how she saw vision. So you could bet like this is really the true vision. And then you got Hayward who so crooked this whole time got a source of her power, got a bit of her power and used it to power his own version of vision. And that's our post credit scene. We got the anti-vision. Oh, I'm excited to see how that's going to happen. Now we got to have Vision and Anti-Vision face each other off. We got Agatha and Wanda who got to face off. And then we got the kids. If Wanda has the power to create Vision out of thin air, of course she has the power to create those kids. But when she created Vision out of thin air, he's real and solid. He's not some illusion out of her mind, right? So... I'm sure he impregnated her. I cannot believe these are weird ways I'm going right now. So yes, these must be really visions and her kids, but this isn't the real vision yet. It is. It's, it, ugh. so what is going to happen with these kids? What's going to happen between Wanda and Agatha? What revelations await us in the season finale next freaking week? I can't believe we're already the season finale. I hope that they wrap things up. If, if they do leave a cliffhanger, it must be something that leads into uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. But my freaking goodness! I mean, I, I hope they wrap things up here pretty darn good. And what's going on with Monica? Like, there was a lot that happened in this episode. And we had Monica. She was creeping around the house. She's got her own sets of powers. How's that going to come into play in the season finale? Will she team up with Wanda and Vision and explore her own powers? Are we going to get our own show with Monica Rambo and see her abilities and who she becomes? Again, I don't know. So I'm excited that I don't know. And it's fun to kind of experience this as it goes. And so Pietro finds her, and that's where we left off with her. And Vision is on his way to the house. So I'm very much so looking forward to Pietro, the fake Pietro, obviously. Now that's answered, so it's not a multiverse person. So this is, this is incredibly interesting. I cannot wait to see where this goes. So what did you think of episode 8? Let's talk about that in the comments. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button to become a Durbanian. Hit that bell by the subscribe button so you're notified for my next WandaVision review, movie review, ranking video, theological analysis, trailer reaction, or anything else I do here. I'm Durbin. Thanks for checking out Durbanian.